This is 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, episode 174, The Best and Worst Headboards. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter, Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away, and usually in about five minutes. Now let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Hello, my feng shui friend. I am back with you talking all about feng shui and your headboard. It is absolutely essential that you have a headboard on your bed. Why? Because you need that support. When we think about being in bed, we have to always be thinking about being in that command position. And that means you're able to have a nice solid wall behind your bed and you can see the door. But many times what happens is beds are left without a headboard or at worst, there are headboards that can create problems for you. So today on this episode, we're going to be talking all about headboards and why they're important and which ones can be problematic and how vital it is that you have them because you need that support while you sleep. All right, so let's let's dive on in and start talking about headboards. You know, the bed is is a critical piece of your ability to be rested and support you as you sleep and indeed your life. When the headboard of your bed is compromised, it can create problems for you in your life, in your relationships, health and difficulties with money, even getting proper rest. Many beds simply don't have a headboard at all, and this gives the sleeper absolutely zero support. And then that means your sleep quality is impacted. And a lot of times singles have beds without a headboard because, you know, they feel like it's just me. It doesn't really matter. And oftentimes if you have no headboard on your bed, you feel like you're always going it alone in the world or you don't feel supported. Now, case in point is two things have come up recently for me that made me think about this particular episode, which I was shocked when I (laughs) started looking around for uh, what episode to do today. And that was, I went to, Tim and I went to go to a charming bed and breakfast over this past weekend. And it was really darling and it was nice. And the room was actually sort of a modern style, even though it was in this small Texas town. uh, And it was really uh, just a charming location, charming home. But like I said, the bedroom was kind of modern. They had a platform bed, but there was no headboard. And the reason I chose this was because, well, it was one of the only ones available because we went to the Round Top Texas Antiques Festival, which goes on for a week or two weeks every spring and fall. It's a huge draw, and getting a hotel room there is really hard to find. <laughs> and so we opted for this one. I said, well, you know, I can either get a really fancy schmancy room with a queen bed, or I can get a more modern room with a king bed. And I felt like the king bed was the end all be all because I know it's much more comfortable for, for me and for my husband. He's, he's a big guy anyway. And as it turns out, when we got in bed and we slept lousy that night and I just, I kept, you know, you hate to say I looked at it and I went, ah, but it doesn't have a headboard. And I'll tell you one of the things that I think comes up when I think about a head with no headboard, and that is incomplete. We have a way of compensating for incompleteness, but we also are influenced by it. So when we see something that's undone or is flawed in some way, so for instance, when you walk into somebody's house, they, you know, you, you, your eyes are automatically drawn to whatever flaw is there. So maybe there is a scuff on the wall paint, or there's some damage on the wall, something like that. Your eyes just go there and you see nothing else. And I think that's true in a bedroom because we feel like a bed needs to be this whole complete package. It's sort of like somebody giving you a wrapped box as a present. It just ain't a present until the bow is on it. And it just ain't a bed until the headboard is on it. So that's really kind of something that that sticks out in my mind. Another thing that sticks out in my mind personally 
personally on this subject is that I'm working on a, a web series sort of TV show. It's a makeover show. And it's for an older woman who is a resident and a living, uh, assisted living facility. And she has an apartment. And when I looked at her space and looking at how we can make it over, make it better looking and, and more suitable for her, she didn't have a headboard on her bed. She actually has a traditional hospital bed because she's, well, she's 92 and, and she needs a certain, um, certain fig configurations with the bed that, that, that help her. And that's completely understandable, completely understandable. And there technically is a headboard, just like there is technically a headboard on most hospital beds, but there's not really one. It's, there's, there's, there's a place that stops the mattress, but it's not really that final flourish of saying that's a headboard. And one of the things that I'm working on right now is giving her a headboard that she can put her bed up against and it will feel like a real bed, not like a hospital bed. And so when you look in her room, you go, oh, look at that pretty headboard. And the other thing is, I feel like she needs that support. And she's got some other, she's got some other issues in terms of arrangement and, and design in her room that really don't really do anything for it, but you'll see that, uh, when it comes up, uh, it's, and I'm working on it right now, buying all kinds of stuff for her room and getting excited about working on this for her. And, and I'm excited to see how this makeover is going to make her feel and what she's going to notice in terms of her life and feeling different and better, more supported. And so these things have, you know, just come up to kind of reinforce the importance in my mind of the importance of a real headboard and, and the proper headboard, the right kind of headboard that's really going to be supportive for you. So this is really important that we have one. So let's talk about Let's talk about the different types of headboards because some headboards actually can cause more harm than good. A good example of this is the metal bed. And when I talk about the metal bed, I talk about the old fashioned uh, brass bed. And they may look romantic, but there's a lot of problems that can come up when sleeping in a metal bed, especially a metal headboard. When you're selecting a headboard, you want one that provides good support and gives you that right kind of rest. It's key to making you feel supported, confident, successful, happy in your relationships, healthy and prosperous. And when we're talking about metal headboards or the your grandmother's antique brass headboard, or even one you've recently bought, a metal headboard really doesn't provide the proper support at night while you sleep. It can also conduct energy. Metal is conductive, right? That's how do we get electricity? It goes through metal wires. So it's conducting this energy even while you're sleeping. So many times what people have is they have fitful or disturbed sleep, or maybe they're waking up all night long. And another thing that can happen is metal beds can also result in headaches, create problems for you, maybe even with migraines or sinus issues. This is why we really don't want to have a metal bed like those brass rail type beds because, well, number one is they're really not solid, are they? That's an important thing that we want to look for is not having those bars and things where your your pillows can get shoved between them and and that ha there's space between them because that, that is another lack of support right there. So let's talk about low headboards. Now, we were talking about this woman that I'm on her makeover that we're working on her room and she's got a hospital bed with a very, very low headboard. Now, if you have a very low headboard like that, you may feel that you have no support and that can make you feel insecure, uncomfortable, and stressed in your daily life. So when you're shopping for a headboard or trying to pick one out that's going to be really supportive, look for one that's taller. Maybe would even let you lean up against it in bed. That's really my acid test <laughs> in terms of height. What's the correct height for that? I always like one that is tall enough that I can sit up against in bed because many people do that. They sit up in bed and read, read maybe, or watch TV, um, you know, and, or just have some pillow talk. And that's always a, a nice uh, way to have that up against. You don't want to be leaning against the wall. Somehow it just makes you feel like, I don't know, a college kid, something like that. So 
look for headboards that are going to be tall enough to support you in bed and tall enough for your pillows. If your pillows stacked up are, are taller than the headboard, there's a problem. <laughs> All right. Now the popular, the very popular eighties headboard, the storage headboard is just one of those situations where there's just too much going on. A lot of times there's clutter that's ran behind the doors and the cabinets. A lot of times there's holes for storage and sometimes there are mirrors. So if you've got problems with your headboard, health or relationships and you've got a storage headboard, well, you're looking at the culprit there that needs to go really those things with all the cubbies and, and sometimes they even come over you when you're in bed or you they're recessed in all that stuff around your head. Really? The only thing you need to have around you are some nice uh, comfortable sheets and some nice fluffy supportive pillows. And that's all you should have around your head. Not a whole bunch of books and all kinds of electronics. And those places just end up being a clutter zone and that's not going to help you sleep. Well, I really, I really uh, feel like that is going to prevent good sleep. Now let's talk about another uh, sort of thing that comes up, that comes up with headboards and that's the holy headboard. These are where you have some designs and there are like holes that will siphon and drain your energy. So if you've got like holes in your headboard, now let's talk about what holes mean. It could be like slats, spindles, cutouts. It, it is, uh, maybe you have, uh, it's a, it's a metal or some kind of, um, you know, design in wood. And if it's not solid, then it's going to allow the energy that you're trying to accumulate as you sleep to just seep away from you. And that can keep you from feeling adequately rested. And you may even be agitated during the day. Holy headboards, just not something you want to look for when you're shopping for a headboard. But let, let me, let me just uh, say there are some headboards that are solid and maybe they have like a little accent strip with some design in it. That's fine. But I'm talking about like, especially those headboards that are slats. And one of the ones that comes up uh, or comes to mind most frequently are those children's beds that are cribs that they will convert into a bed. And so you take the crib with all the slats and everything. And, and that makes sense to have slats for a crib, but they'll, often be used as a headboard. They can be turned around and turned into uh, a child's bed. And while I think that that sounds like a good idea from a price standpoint, I really highly discourage you from doing that. If you want to have a, a crib, get a crib. And then when it's time to get your child's bed, get a proper bed with a proper headboard that doesn't have the splits and, and, and uh, all that kind of thing. It's just not a good idea. Now let's talk about the separated or split headboards in many countries, especially those outside of the U S twin beds are often pushed together to create a large King bed. And this is also true of headboards. So when they're not used for a couple, the two separate beds can be pushed apart and used as a single. I, now this is convenient. I can, I cannot deny that. And it makes a great option for house guests, but it can create separations or problems with a couple. Sometimes it's just the design of the headboard, but regardless whether it is an actual two separate headboards that are pushed together, always make sure you use a single headboard and a single mattress, especially if you're a couple or you want to be. Uh, this is uh, something that, like I said, it's really better for a guest room, but not for a couple. We just don't want to have that, that uh, symbolic line going down the middle of the bed. Now let's talk about the wallboard headboard. Now these are floating headboards that are mounted onto the wall. And I'm not super keen on those because they often don't give you adequate support because they often have a hole between the mattress and the headboard. You know what I mean? And the pillows get squished down in there. Your headboard needs to be firmly mounted on the bed to create a solid support from just below the mattress and up. We always want to have our bed to be one unit as much as possible. Not so crazy. Those are good for, uh, those are good for a hotel situation because well, you know, uh, hotels <laughs> notoriously get a lot of romantic action as it were. And so those headboards need to be firmly uh, attached to the wall as it were. But really we want to have a proper headboard with, with our bed when we have it together. Now let's talk about good headboards. The type of headboards are really going to be the best for you. And when it comes to the best headboards for the bed, that really the issue is very straightforward. The goals are simple, solid, and supportive. <laughs> These are the two objectives that we always want to aim for when we're talking about headboards. 
Now, a solid supported headboard is solid, unbroken. It's going to give you the best sleep. It's going to give you the most support and help your relationship the most. And it, it's going to make you feel like you can go out and conquer the world the next day. <laughs> and you don't feel like it's just you going it alone. This can be a wood headboard or an upholstered headboard. Either one is fine and is good for support. Again, nice and solid. No holes, no slats, nothing like that. It's all nice and solid. Another one is a tall headboard. Uh, so if you have a tall headboard, this type of headboard is allows you to sit up in bed and it's still firmly behind your head and back. And this also provides you with adequate support as you sleep. Unlike that short headboard, that's going to make you feel like you're sitting on a three-legged stool. It's the whole, whole other different uh, situation when we're talking about sitting in a chair or a stool that has no back on it versus sitting in a chair that has a back on it. It's a whole lot more comfortable. The same thing is true with your headboards. So you always want to be thinking of it that way, that just like you wouldn't want to sit on a stool all day, you wouldn't want to sleep in a bed that really feels unfinished and it doesn't feel like it's giving you good, solid support. Okay, so let's go over uh, three tips for headboards. Uh, number one, you just got to have them. They feel finished. They feel like they finish out of bed. They feel supportive. This is especially true if you are uh, a single and you've had no headboard on your bed. Get that headboard. It's, it's important that you have uh, support and you feel supported in your life. This is, and this is important no matter what age you are. So whether you are a kiddo, uh, a little kid starting on your first big boy or big girl bed, uh, or whether you're a 92 year old woman who really doesn't have any support on her bed, she, we all need support no matter what age we are in our life. We absolutely do. The other thing that we want to make sure is that we want to make sure we avoid metal headboards. This can be like the brass bed, uh, anything that has, you know, the slats or any kind of decorative element that's like very metallic-y. Anything that's very metal. If you somebody looked at it and you said, that's a metal headboard, that's going to help uh, create a situation where you may not rest well, you may have sinus problems and headaches, and we don't, nobody needs that. Lastly, definitely avoid the the holy or the storage type headboards. Anything where there's a whole lot of uh, stuff going on or storage, then there's clutter all around your head. You really need to be nice and clear at, when you're going to bed. And the same thing is true with holy headboards. We don't want to have a lot of holes or slats, that kind of thing in our headboards. So whether you've got cut on, cutouts or spindles, these are all just things that are going to create a, a, a loss of energy. So make sure you get a nice solid headboard and have a nice solid night's sleep. All right. Well, thanks for being with me this week on 5-Minute Feng Shui. I'll talk to you next week. Hey, thanks for listening today. Although the year of the tiger is here, it's come in with a roar and there's going to be some big ups and downs this year, like the invasion in Ukraine. But I wrote about Putin and some of the other world leaders in the year of the tiger feng shui forecast and success pack. Now back in 2021, when I was writing this in the fall, I could see this on the horizon and I warned about it. There's other things that you're going to want to know too, like where to invest your money, where to find love and what to expect all year. And I cover all houses and bedroom directions and every zodiac sign. The success pack will help you be ready for the year, be prepared, make more money, and keep fortune on your side. Check out the Year of the Tiger Feng Shui forecast at redlotusletter.com forward slash water tiger, all one word. 